Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. This is the first video for Lecture Three. This is subtopic 2.3, Electronic Configuration, which is the last subtopic for Chapter 2, Atomic Structure. So here are the learning outcomes that you should be able to learn at the end of this subtopic. A. Explain Aufbau Principle, Hans Rule and Pauli's Exclusion Principle. B. Predict the electronic configuration of atoms and also monoatomic ions by using SPDF notation and orbital diagram. And C. Justify the anomalous electronic configurations of chromium and copper atom. Let's start with the electronic configurations. So what is the electronic configuration? So electronic configuration will show you how the electrons are filled in the orbitals. It also describes the arrangement of electrons in an atom. The electronic configuration of an atom and also monoatomic ions can be represented by using two methods, which are by using orbital diagram and two, using SPDF notation. So we will go through each of these methods deeply. Now let's start with the first method, which is orbital diagram. So orbital diagram is a diagram that is represented by a box and each electron by an arrow. So the arrow hat will indicate the direction of spin. So one arrow will represent one electron. You can draw the electron either in half-headed arrow like this or you can draw the arrow with a fully-headed arrow like this. So the arrow that pointed upward will represent the electron that moved in clockwise motion and the other electron must be in downward position, which represent electron that move in anti-clockwise motion. So this represent electron that has a positive half value. And this electron represent the electron that has a negative half value. So the, the pair of half-head arrow will re represent two electrons. So let's take a look at oxygen atom, for example. So oxygen atom has eight electrons, and how do we draw the orbital diagram? So we can draw by using a box to represent the orbital diagram. So the first two electrons will fill in two S orbital. So the other two electrons will fill in two S orbital. And the remaining four electrons will be filled in 2p orbital. So each orbital will be drawn in a box like this and you have to bear in mind that the distance between each orbital must be significantly far from each other. That means you have to draw a space between each orbital except the orbital with a equal energy or degenerate orbital like these 2p orbitals. Or you can also draw the orbital diagram of oxygen electrons by using a platform. So each orbital has one platform. So two electrons in one S orbital, the other two electrons in two S orbital, and the remaining four electrons in two P orbital. So you must have you must draw a significant space between each orbital, one S and two S, and the ear orbitals of two P must be drawn closer to each other. So this is the orbital diagram. So what about method 2? SPDF notation. So SPDF notation is a notation which writing the symbol for the occupied subshell and adding a superscript to indicate the number of electrons in that subshell. So for example, let's take the same atom which is oxygen. So oxygen has 8 electrons. So the SPDF notation will be 1s2. 2s2 and 2p4. So the number at the front will represent this number of shell or principal quantum number n. The letter after the number represent the angular momentum quantum number L or the subshell. And the superscript number will represent the number of electrons that fills 
in the subshell. So this is the SPDF notation. So next, I will teach you about the three roles that we will use when we apply when we assigning electrons to the orbital of an atom at the ground state or in the simpler words the three rules that we will apply when we fill in the electrons in the orbitals so the first rule is the Aufbau principle the second rule is the Hans rule and the third rule is the Pauli exclusion principle so now let's start with the first rule which is the Aufbau principle the Aufbau principle states that the electrons are arranged in its atomic orbitals in order of increasing energy. The orbitals of lower energy are filled in first with the electrons and only then the orbitals of high energy are filled. So the order of filling orbital is, so we're starting with the 1s that has the lowest energy, followed with 2s orbital, then we have 2p orbital, followed by 3s orbital, then 3p orbital, followed by 4s, then we have 3d, 4p, and 5s. Not in this sequence, if you notice that, this is the wrong sequence of increasing energy of subshell. So we have 1s, followed by 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, and 4d. So if you notice that, so this, the difference between these two arrangements is at this point. So you have to note that 4s orbital has a lower energy compared to 3d orbital. So this is the relative energy level of atomic orbital. So this diagram shows the energy level for many electron atoms compared to the energy level for hydrogen atom that has only one electron. So for many electron atoms, the energy level of orbitals starting from 1s, then 2s, then 2p, 3s has high energy followed by 3p, then 4s has lower energy compared to 3d and so on. So in conclusion, In order of orbitals for multi-electron atoms, so you can use this diagram to memorizing the sequence of energy of orbitals starting from 1s, then 2s, just follow the arrow, then 2p followed by 3s, then we have 3p orbitals, then 4s orbital, then 3d orbital followed by 4p orbitals, 5s, 4d, and so on. So, this is the arrangement or, or sequence in order of increasing energy of subshells. For example, we have a vanadium atom with 23 electrons. So, how does the Aufbau principle looks like? So, we will start with 1s orbital that has a lower energy. So, we, we will fill the first two electrons in 1s orbital. The next two electrons in 2s orbital, that has a lower energy compared to 2p. So the next six electrons will fill in 2p orbital. Then the next two electrons will fill in 3s orbital. Now, I want to remind you that you have to bear in mind that the maximum number of electrons in s orbital is only 2. And the maximum number of electrons that fill in p orbital is 6, just like you have learned in your previous video. So the remaining electron will fit in 3s orbital, the next 6 electron in 3p orbital, the next 2 electron will fit in 4s orbital first, then the remaining, the last 3 electron will fit in 3d orbital. So this is the correct electronic configuration according to Aufbau principle. And this is the wrong electronic configuration which disobey Aufbau principle. So if you notice that, so the electron fill in 1s orbital first with 1s2, then the next two electrons in 2s orbital, 2s2, the next six electrons in 2p orbital, 2p6, the next two electrons in 3s orbital, so it becomes 3s2. Then it is wrong because 
the electron should fill in the 4s orbital first. Then it fill with 3d orbital. So this is wrong. Even though the total number of electrons is 23. However, this is the correct, this is the wrong arrangement because this disobey Afbar principle. Next, we have poly exclusion principle. So poly exclusion principle states that this principle states that no two electrons in an atom can have the same four quantum numbers. So the electron in a given orbital must have the same value of n, l, and m, but they must have different value of s. So only two values of s are possible, which, which is positive half and negative half. So let's take a look at helium atom, for example. So helium atom has two electrons. So this is the orbital diagram that shows the two electrons in one s orbital. So one electron with electron with arrow pointing upwards, and the other arrow, the other electron pointing downwards. So if we state or oh, the the set of quantum numbers for the first electron. So n equals to 1, which is referring to the first shell here, number 1. L equals to 0, which is represent the S subshell. Sub M equals to 0, and S is positive half, since it, it's moving uh, in clockwise motion, upward position. And the second electron has a set quantum number of n equals to 1, l equals to 0, m equals to 0, and s equals to negative half since it moves in anti clockwise motion with arrow down downward. So these two electrons has different set of quantum numbers and these follow Pauli exclusion principle. So these are the examples that are not allowed according to Pauli exclusion principle. So for example, here you have helium with two electrons. So this is a wrong uh, configuration according to Pauli exclusion principle because this electron pointing upward so it has a set quantum number of n equals to 1, l equals to 0, m equals to 0 and s equals to positive half and this electron also has the same set of quantum numbers which is n equals to 1, l equals to 0, m equals to 0 and s also positive half. So this is not allowed since it has the same set of quantum numbers. And this is also not allowed because this is this obey poly exclusion principle. So it is wrong because the maximum number of electron in 1s is only 2. And here, these two electron having same set of quantum numbers which is n equals to 1, l equals to 0, m equals to 0, and s equals to positive half. So this is also not allowed. So in the next video, you will learn about Hans rule.